swaying leaves, bright sunshine, and the beautiful sea. This is Boao, a town on the east coast of Hainan in China. Standing here, you can barely hear noise from cars on road, and that's partly because they are all new energy vehicles, mostly made in China. And on top of this vast venue, the entire roof is covered in solar panels. The venue uses only green electricity. I've been here for roughly a week now, as you may have figured out, to attend a Boao Forum for Asia annual conference. There's one thing that has impressed me. All things here really focus on carbon emissions reduction, whether at a hotel or at a conference center. But it's not just a one-off offerings for those attendees. It's showcasing the country's green tech capabilities that have drawn attention from plenty of participants at the forum this year. China is also a leader in many green technologies. That's, I think, what others are jealous of. You know, China is the dominant producer of solar panels, has a real lead in the production of electric buses, electric cars, batteries. There are around 10 sessions related to green development, whether it's about green energy, green financing, or corporate green responsibility. That's almost one-third of the public sessions. Why is there so much attention on this in Asia and China? But if we don't see a transition for Asia towards net zero, then we cannot fight the climate crisis globally. How would this be discussed? in a continent that the International Energy Agency predicts will consume half of the world's electricity next year. This year is the golden year, I would say, to continue our uh, cooperation. We're going to have more productive uh, investment, more green investment. So, cooperation and investment. China is number one in terms of investment, and also the second uh, largest partner in terms of trading. We were looking forward to have more greener investments in Laos. They just now we have many Chinese investors that invest in Laos and you know, have started from, from Laos, China, Railway. A big part of the investment is a result from a country's joining the Belt and Road Initiative, a 10-year-old project led by China, with a trade and infrastructure network spanning across continents. By June 2023, more than 150 countries and 30 international organizations across five continents had signed cooperation agreements under the initiative. Around climate finance, the whole world is talking about trying to find $100 billion. And the Belt and Road Initiative in the first 10 years was several trillion dollars. So it's so big that it has a very large influence due to its sheer size. In the past, a lot of the Key export products from China were also large coal-fired power plants. So we'd like to see that shift in future projects in the Belt and Road, making use of China's advantage in green technologies and the progress in cleaning up some environmental problems from rivers to air pollution. So that's what we're discussing here today, that if there is a clear direction that the Belt and Road Initiative focuses on green, it will have a big influence on many other players as well. It's already been an influence on countries outside Asia, drawing them into the Belt and Road Initiative too. This is our first time in the for China is working with five projects, very big projects in Colombia, so we are here for that. And we hope that in the next forum we can be as well showing our results working together with a, a country as a China. What will the new projects in the next decade be like? We have our national development plan, it's called Colombia Power of Life. And that means that we work with green projects and 60% of the budget in infrastructure is dedicated to multimodal uh, transport. So we are working in airports with essential services, we are working in ports, we are working in the maritime uh, as well, and we are working in railways. So we are working for a plan uh, after 2030, and of course uh, China is very important in this project. While this year's conference has come to an end, the pursuit of a sustainable future is not going to fade away. As the Asian Sustainable Development Report released at a forum predicts, by 2040, wind and solar will become the main power source on the continent. That will require rapid growth in new energy tech and facilities, in which the report says China will play an important role, especially in reducing the global cost of wind and solar power generation.